I'd like to welcome you to tonight's Johnny James reading series. As some of you may be aware, this is a monthly reading series we have up here in the Heritage Room on the third Thursday of every month. Tonight's reader is Kim Wheeler, he's a Lincoln resident. His writing interests include short humorous verse, haiku, sinaryu, and reestablishing a traditional illustrated book. He has three volumes in our collection up here, which I encourage you to examine after the reading. His earliest one is Dying Poet and Chronicles of Plinth. And as you notice, it's kind of a unique book. It has kind of like double mints, two books in one. His next book is Loves of the Cat, which was very well received a few years ago when it came out. And uh, his latest books, Found Verse, and all these books are illustrated, some il interesting illustrations which are displayed to my right and then also on the table, which you might want to take a look at after the reading then also. Oh, good evening. Thank you all for coming. Well, I'd like to begin this with... Uh, Japanese proverb that states that uh, the more words, the less elegance. And this refers not only to haiku and sinero as a written art, but to haiku no michi and sinero no michi as ways of living. That is an inner vacuity, a willing poverty, and the way of loneliness. Haiku and sinero as poetry are moments of vision captured in a breath length natural form of 14 and 21 syllables in rhythms of 7-7 seven, seven, and 5-7-5. Five, five. Haiku is a term in physics also called a world event, implying a certain space and denoting a specific time and exposing an interaction of an observer. Haiku, the poetry of seasons, came to prominence in the late 1500s. It derived from the first stanza of Ringa, an ancient form of chain verse written by several authors who passed the growing work between themselves. Haiku are spots of time, sensual and objective. And much later on, haiku became known as it became more popular as death verse. Partly for the many good verses composed by the dying poets, but more importantly, because the art of reading and writing haiku is implied, in, an, in it is implied a constant psychological dying from moment to moment, the emptying of mind. Sinro, a shock of mild surprise, is similar to haiku in form and length and came about largely as a reaction to haiku. It began in the middle of the 1700s and was named after the first selector of this type of verse and up until the 20th century was usually composed anonymously. Sinru is unsentimental and subjective, often humorous and satirical. Its field of vision is unbounded by time or space, going backwards and forwards in history and in imagination. Both haiku and sinru are easy to read and write, but very difficult to master. If a poet was able to compose, say, 10 good verses, and these, out of hundreds or even thousands of attempts, he was considered a worthy teacher and soon would gather many, many eager students. Today in Japan, haiku continues as an art form and is practiced by a large part of the population. Contests abound, and tens of thousands are written each year. And this is also happening in America. But on the other hand, cinema has only recently reemerged as a practiced voice and is slowly finding its way into the English language. Now, before I get into the scenario, I'm going to read you a couple of spots of time from my uh, first book. And uh, from The Dying Poet, I wish to share with you an imagined page from the journal of John Chapman. Otherwise, uh, we know him as Johnny Appleseed. And I guess I was trying to imagine how this man figured out what to do. <laughs> Uh, so it goes. From the Journal of John Chapman. Spring of 97, under the waning rule of Samuel. 
asleep before, but now awake, by the screen snake they've called the Mussingum River. Entry, April 2, 1797. When I lost the earth, I came upon heaven. For the unknown mixer of my blood and breath, the sun is laughter and you are fire. This morning near the water's edge, I laid my head upon a turtle's back, and like swine, my thoughts went nosing about the mossy bank. In their dream to munch and lunch on apples fat with juice, I cut loose from those swine of mine, only to hear them too soon return. They said, let apple trees abound, dear John, sow three seeds to each spot of ground, the first for the baker, the second for his pie, and the last for the animals, then Jonathan and I. Another uh, spot of time is coming out of the uh, Chronicles of Plants. And it's the second part of a two-part poem entitled uh, Volume 2, America by Way of the Internal Combustion Engine. Toward that ancient knowledge and all points east. Of the dozen or so philosophical questions worth a proverbial dime, I know of no others that have placed my mind in such a bind as, for example, to find a way to climb atop the monkey puzzle pine. And ponder this unsolvable question, if you will. Who invented the button? Was it by chance or Oliver Sutton? Or tell me, please, how did we come by our reasons, the soft thought pulp of our mental squeezings? And lastly, I fear we must suddenly consider the most quickening and quirking any of these queries. Can we make her on a half a tank, or should I stop for gas in Missouri? Yeah, cheers. Now, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce the uh, Loves of the Cat, which is a, uh, an anthology of uh, haiku, uh, which I sort of discovered when I was uh, doing some research. And, uh, came upon the title as, uh, as a fact, it's really one of the, the sections in my uh, other book, Found Verse. And so I decided to expand it, including my verse and a couple of other people that I know. And going back through the, uh, uh, the literature that I have, I put together uh, quite a few poems that were written by cats. One of the unique things about this volume is that it's very representative of nearly all the authors that are famous of this type of uh, art and it does go back nearly to the beginning of haiku. And, on, and besides that, it is really some of the very nicest haiku that you can really run into. I wish to begin this with a ford uh, given to me by uh, one of the contributors to this book, uh, Mr. J.W. Hackett. And he offered this on behalf of uh, R.H. Blythe, who is, who is responsible for a lot of the translations in this book from the original Japanese. In one of his last letters I received from R. H. Blythe, written a few months before his death in 1964, he relates the following incident which occurred while he was visiting his revered friend, D.T. Suzuki. The other day I went to see Dr. Suzuki, who is now, as you know, 93 years old. I asked him a question to hold on a cat in my arms. What is more important, to be fond of cats or to understand Zen? He answered, they are one and the same thing. And I said to him, you have passed your examination. But I did not really think so. To be fond of cats and to understand Zen are equally important because they are the same thing. Yes, this is so. But at the same time, what is more important is to be fond of cats. As you will see, even in this Zen mandra, the last word is had by the cat which manifesting, in, as it does, the sovereign suchness of things is just as it should be. To present the freedom and beauty, the humor and life of cats in life, one life, many lives, many loves. As one of us, the cat is seated here, the parting year. A stray cat running off under the eaves. 
the winter moon. The kitten holds down the leaf for a moment. Flopped on the fan, the big cat asleep. A stray cat asleep on the roof in the spring rain. The spring rain, a little girl teaches the cat to dance. The kitten is playing hide and seek among the flowers of the peony. Having slept, the cat gets up and with great yawns goes lovemaking. Loves of the cat, forgetful even of the rice sticking on his whiskers. How awful. They have broken the stone wall. Cats in love. The little girl playing ball now makes a face at the mewing kitten. You see, these are very much like potato chips. You really can't st st stop with one, and then yet, uh, you know, if you start stuffing them in, it can get kind of um, obnoxious. The kitten, weight on the balance, is still playing. The peach blossoms at the gate, they are putting the cat on the scales. Cats in love. When they cease, the hazy moon over the bedchamber. Both of them with whiskers, cats in love. The lady cat with love and barley rice, so thin. I feel envious, just as I had given up hope, cats in love. Say nothing, Cicada, me Lord Whiskers is here present. Out of the dark, into the dark, loves of the cat. As diversion, the cat is catching the flies in the window. The cat's eyes have become like needles in the heat I guess this next one is one of my favorite out of this. The water of spring, a cat fails to jump over it. There's nothing at all he doesn't know, the cat asleep on the kitchen range. It is seen in the paper mache cat this morning of autumn. In the eyes of the cat is the color of the sea on a sunny day in winter. The swallows are wetting the cat's claws on the rice field path. A cat comes out on the shore. Things are spread out. It is midday. And the following are a few more modern uh, cat poems. Summer veranda listening to the fluttering birds, the tail of the cat. The playful kitten, how calmly he chews the flies buzzing misery. The kitten crouches and then leaps at the genie rising from the tea. When finally caught, the kitten's tail is given a real good licking. For a real measure of the day's heat, see the length of the sleeping cat. A dying ember in the abandoned cat, love and the need of love. Milk left in my glass draws the paw of the kitten unto emptiness. Rumpus in the kitchen, scooting madly round the floor, a bag-headed cat. The cat takes my lap 
and his purring now becomes my meditation. In an open drawer, smoothing out a rough day, a sleeping kitten. The enticed kitten positions to pounce upon the dog's happy dream. Long since a playmate, but always tagging along the old cat's shadow. Uh, the following cat poems are largely Sinru from now on. Difficult to tell at times. <clears throat> Such a fine day, the cat comes upstairs. The anger of a cat is visible on her back. Yearning for him, she takes a cat into her arms. Love going out passes by, love coming in. The scent of the plum tree, the sun, the cat do not approach it. The dried sardine cellar flatters the cat by giving it one. The black cat's bowl, this also must be a one-sided love. The wife of the cricket bemoans perchance his being eaten by a cat. The girl talks only to the cat being made love to. The stories about home all finished, catching the cat's fleas. Damming up the cat's love with her scarlet sash. There is a story concerning the meeting of Soji Hoshi, the greatest of the monk poets, with Yuritamo, the first Minamoto shogun. At the end of their talk, Yuritamo presented Sejo with a silver cat. He turned and gave gave the cat to a child play, playing at the shogun's gate. Some anonymous syndrome concerning this incident. He was given a cat a thousand pipes could be made of. Even if you beat it to death, the cat he was given would turn into money. Even Seijo at first couldn't help rubbing the cat's nose. Behind the moving cart comes the girl carrying the kitten. Seen at night, the eyes only are walking the black cat. The slapped cat washes its face in a corner. Now where shall I go? The cat gets up. The retired old woman grows senile, the cat too. All is quiet. Little cats trailing along, each with its face of fate. A bald canvasser admires our cat. Even the day she was divorced, she lends her gentle lap to the cat. The butterfly lifts the cat up two or three feet. The cherry blossom season, they put more food in the dish for the cat. The bored cat has somewhere or other to go. With your little pads, what is it, kitty, you want to say to me? The cat stretches as though he is going to leave his legs behind. While my wife was out, I drove away three different cats. A fishman seems to have come, says the cat, getting up. The thieving cat sticks his face out of such a place.
On the roof, the thieving cat listens to her scolding. The hanger-on is being told often to leave it for the cat. From the day of the boar, the place where the cat sits becomes high. The old man, the old woman, the cat and the ladle too, all dance. The cat is lying in wait for what is swimming in the glass bowl. The sulky wife speaks only with the cat. New Year's Day, the only dirty thing, the cat on my lap. The fat cat in the smart collar pretends at hunting. Gads, the cats perched on the railing, six, maybe seven. The passing night, in and out of sleep, the neighbor's cat. In her water bowl, the cat's lapping leaves, the moon, undiminished. Only the cat's face, under the steps, the heat. October calm, the visiting child hugs the neighbor's sleeping cat. A parakeet, perhaps, caught in the mind of the cat, smiling in its sleep. Such joy the kitten launches into play, a late brown Mr. Mouse. A cat at the window, curious as to the nature of the life within. Under the gray sky, the gray cat hones her claws on a gray tree. It rains. Midsummer's Eve, a course in the alley. Ah, the loves of the cat. A clumsy gesture. The onlooker, the cat also runs away. The cat's breath moving in darkness over the walk. From across the street, the small boy has come to annoy the cat. Disturbed, the cat lifts its belly onto its back. And the final one from this book. The light pink of the cat's tongue, my hand touches and I begin to know this misery. Well, there's a few selections, some of my own and uh, some of various other artists, mostly anonymous. Well, if we still all together here, I'd like to share some more with you. And uh, this will be taken from uh, a collection of my work that I just published about a year and a half ago. These are the ones that the illustrations have been set up for you to look at. I finished the book and then gave it to a friend of mine, a Stephen Wilbur, and asked him to uh, play around with it. And he said if he had enough time, he would have illustrated it all, but uh, <laughs> also if he would have had enough money, it could have all been illustrated. I'd like to read you uh, a, s a few of these works from the various sections here. And the first part of these uh, poems will be largely haiku and sinero. They'll be, they'll be completely mixed. There'll be no way of telling, basically. And the last part of this book is a hybrid of them, something I've been playing around with myself. <clears throat> Long winter darkness. Overhead, the ancient past. Radiant tonight. About the way, shy of the company of men, old moon, new light.
Apollo and early Venus in the soft gray light, the neighbor's house disappears. Grass moon, spring waits, subdued the calling in, voices of the twilight dream. A lesser light crescent, a great thirst for being, the night spring falls. The spring storm, afterward, the pale blue shell of the robin's dream. Sweep the thinning light, O jet of black wing, echoes, trace the canopy. The sound of the fan past the darkened window, a firefly flashes. Blossoms in a golden haze to her breast, an autumn bee. Some of these are titled. There's one that is titled. It's called Zempty. Thought flees with the light, the new moon soon after. Empty autumn evening. Those were selections from, from a, a section called Light Grains. The next or the following are from Claw and Fang. Snow dragons were yesterday a fallen bough. Close of ice, the cold moon, a hard black night. The winter blast, its final end, passed out on the couch. Spring tempest, beyond the fury of God, a distant jet. Which house do you live in? My beloved Kudula, Kudula. Spring's final breath, the pressure is felt upon the cheek. Sirens of July, at the edge of haiku, from every direction, hidden voices saturate the night. In a hasty wind, beating down the river plat, cattails wag behind. blue summer moon for a face to lay their lives down gnats in a cloud voices in song scent of the wild laurel remaining through the twilight your presence lingers Summer's end, the last cicada, I, this willow weep. From original emptiness, for an instant, then back, autumn dragonfly. This next section is entitled uh, Eve's Con Constant, and here are a few selections from it. Dripping down from the heavens, the stars of December. Wolf moon, spirit reads of the marsh dance while winter weighs its term. A murder of crows on the lawn, the fog and rain. This is called No Dates from a Willow. The spirea displays full airs and graces, white blossoms of the flower moon. A 
a gray streamer turned loose, blowing overhead. Wild cranes return. The first firefly with one flash, the summer rains. For Karen, that you might remember this. Sweet summer play, sister to the wind and leaves, the young child swings. Midsummer's Eve rising to fill the radiant void, a circadian chant. Morning, missed morning, the dove's weeping buries deeply in the churchyard her mate. How clever this morning on each golden petal a silver jewel. The next section is uh, The Loves of the Cat, and that appears also in the anthology. There, there are a couple of new ones added here that didn't appear in the anthology. I'll read those for you. The kittens, uncertain which way to turn, they bump. Atop the step, guarding a tiny house. The black cat's curse. This next section is called Dwarf's Hair Cobbler. Off to the moon, a moth smacks into the screen door. Pain without bitterness, secretly stepping out to sigh the Milky Way. The short night, the first thought, puts an end to sleep. A letter from the coast. Black fin, white water, the accompanying photograph read, whale's tail off Monterey. Such good cheeses she chooses with her squeezes. Swirling vortex in the cup just handed me the Milky Way. So a few selections from uh, Hammer, Wedge, and Thump. It's a law firm. Winter stillness, the vast starry worlds, the stargazer collide. Snow moon, winter calm, in the poet's mind, no thoughts stir. Without referent, the eyes soak it in, a hair crouched among the grasses. A long time ago, I guess, uh, Lincoln used to be called a lilac city. Lying still and lost in the sweet, swelling scent of the lilacs. Hint and promise, broken showers pass. Such heat, night of the thunder moon. This one's entitled American Zen. Not to live in words, in the coolness before rising, the voice of the crow. And will nothing last? She implores, not needing an answer, I nod. No longer my ears, my eyes, to come to learn at last, night of the green corn moon. The next section and the selections are from the Emperor of the Porch. New Year's morning, islands of sound, the snow, a plain, the long train whistles. 
shadows of the long night moon etch the neighbor's house from the roof stars rush out clarity presents beauty the cries of the jay echo through the morning stillness without number in this darkness majesty uncovered a wild and lonely place liquid shadows splash a spring walk the earth scent moist and at one with a cool night the wind through the window brings Venus to his room palace of thunder the mighty cloud kings gather for summer for summer council along with the night the cicadas have called up a vagrant shower autumn mist a wedge of wild geese silently beneath the clouds the view from above no earth to walk on Saturn's day dogs howl but the moon still passes the last one singing autumn cicada turning to embrace a beckoning night well, the final section is called uh, dry wood and cooled ashes these are hybrids of haiku and sinro and uh, another Japanese art form called uh, waka dry wood cool ashes the great warriors wind feathers of the lance breathe at the river's edge cattails brush the thighs of his painted pony the thin flat waters outstretched reach back across his gaze Now here's one I uh, produced uh, for a uh, friend of mine who uh, just died recently. It's called at the Court of the Blessed. Adios, he whispered from his seclusion as a player and a friend. When is this kingdom? Embroidered cloth and incense, water thrown at the candle's end. Another one was produced right after the uh, tragedy in the space program. Approaching light speed for a price, Ugati, for a price. Star to star, let fly the common center. Farewell and have done with that distant floating world. Unlearnt is untried and metaphors make no sense he has no place winter clings to the outer life so this one's called strato dweller a whim high flight the notion at the rim of the winter solstice quietly upward in the morning soar sound limits light binds a favored presence recalls the world the black turned loam the green winter wheat and driving this deserted highway i realize the galaxy beyond <clears throat> this is four four Eight four. Brunilla, one life, many lives. What then isn't the truth? Spring, and the gardener laughs. 
This one's called The Forgotten Door. Son of Mary, my sleeve, where else but here the wild rue? Easter comes, clipping the bindings, spilling its contents over the morning calm. The essential life cannot be distinguished, carrying on, therefore, unconcerned. Dry wood, cool ashes, anonymous, and quite near to the place of my arising, the point of my returning, twilight in the beginner's mind. Dawn parting. Into their future, white cranes disappear. Wet meadows, fallen grasses. But who'll by the thunder? Wide thoughts bring word tracks that it couldn't be other otherwise. Bezel, they are automata. Sunday's bill of fare, the heat of fly in the saucer, the next freed man. At the ball game, the darkened planet, summer finds in her mother's arms, the baby sleeps cradled in a bed of stars. This one's called the crossing. The ride out was the ride in, turning over the mind. Every atom, every you. River fog, the vapor's edge, stirred by the wind, slips the newly green canopy. Landslide. Gravity tugs the fallen ends, fold to fold, for the old, what's due to the new, the new. And this one is a uh, another one of those spots of time dealing with... Uh, uh, Robin Hood, and also a good friend of mine who, who is from England. Some quadri-dimensional news. To the horn, little John, blow out this hour, marking our minds and newborn to the green wood. Aye, mate, and make your merry sound lie down deep into the cool blue shadows of the forest floor, imparting with every note a kiss. It's a bit longer one. It's called The Way of the Water. Suddenly, the summer showers skirting the western edge. Ahead, the steam lifts, hovering momentarily, suspended above the black pools worn in a back county road. Motoring on the shimmering reflections of a swift passing, splashing over the shoulder onto the other shore. Through the mirror at the water clouds dispersal. With the heat, the rain returns, evaporating in the late afternoon. And the final selection I wish to read from this. It's called Here Dies, There is Born. Abiding in the near at hand, this also straddles the way of the sly man. Above any glory and nourished by the unfathomable void, autumn's ending, a few stray thoughts. These two pass unattended. As the quail speak, the day's eyes now darkening, the moon becomes my pillow. Oh, thank you. Well, entertain any questions or comments or donations. Uh, Are there any bookstores in Lincoln that sell your books? Are there? Uh, Nebraska Book Company does. Uh, the Way Home Bookstore does. Where's that located? Uh, it's 48th and Pioneer's Boulevard, I believe it is. And you know where the Nebraska Book Company is. Yes, I've been there.
Uh, those are the moment. Miller and Payne sometimes carries them. But uh, uh, The Way Home carries a full selection of them. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a chance to get it out of my system. I don't have to look at it anymore. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you, if you care to glance over the illustration.